Do you have trouble sleeping at night? Are you seen as the weird guy at parties, dark bags under your eyes, and a five o'clock shadow that never seems to go away? Do you suffer from irritable eyes, from the endless late nights staring at your computer screen with thoughts of alien conspiracies that force you to stay up just one more hour so you can research further? Does your family even recognize you anymore? If so, then Secure Team may be the treatment option you're looking for. Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team, or as I like to call the channel, anytime after 12 a.m., Insomnia Team. And uh, here we are, another late night, at least where I am. And I wanted to talk to you guys about some future changes, well, not really changes, but some new things coming to the channel. Um, you know, we've always been based around UFO sightings, government conspiracies and cover-ups, but as the years have gone by, I've been wanting, and I know many of you have voiced your concerns as well, that you want to see some other cool new stuff, such as interviews, whether it be with other UFO researchers or normal, everyday people, maybe talking about their abduction experiences. And I'm proud to say that interviews will be coming to the channel very soon. There's also going to be a new addition to the Secure Team channel, which is actually going to start with this very video. Now, I love showing you guys new UFO footage and sightings and cool stuff like that, but if you followed the channel, you'll know that I also have a love of telling mysterious stories, whether it be about legends, myths, um, unexplainable mysteries that have never been solved, what have you, because a lot of these cases and stories tie in uh, to the topic of this channel, which is basically anything strange. If it's strange, then bring it here to the channel and we'll talk about it. So today, with this video, we are going to start a new series here on the Secure Team channel that will be devoted to presenting you guys uh, with some of the most mysterious, unexplained stories or cases that I can get my hands on. And uh, I'm not sure what the name is going to be, um, but uh, just for shits and gigs, I think I'm going to call it um, Insomnia Stories. How about that? Because, well... I don't know, it just has a, a cool ring to it. Corny, I know, but I think it explains what I'm trying to do here. Uh, certainly relates to me and uh, the late hours that I stay up researching and learning. I'm just one of those people. The later it gets, the more awake and alive I become. And believe me, folks, that's when stuff gets weird. But this is the first of Secure Team's Insomnia Stories, where tonight we will be discussing the mysterious case of the 1999 Ricky McCormick ciphers. So if you haven't heard of this case, then don't blame yourself, because a lot of the mysterious details surrounding it didn't even come out until around 12 years later, after the mysterious death of a man named Ricky McCormick. So who was this man? And the plain answer is, he was a nobody. He was poor and lived in the projects of St. Louis, Missouri. It wasn't until June 30th, 1999, that police came upon the dead body of a man abandoned in an empty field in St. Charles County. The man later turned out to be Mr. McCormick, and on discovery of the murder victim, police found two mysterious handwritten notes folded up in his pockets. He was also found over 10 miles away from his residence, and they had no solid leads as to who would have wanted to kill him or why. Upon reading these notes that they found in his pockets, they discovered what could only be described as a cipher of some kind. And it wasn't until 12 years later, in 2011, did the FBI finally reveal the fact that they had discovered the mysterious notes and now needed help from the public in decoding this complex cipher. You're seeing one of the letters here, by the way, and this comes straight from the FBI.gov website. And after this information came out, that's when things got stranger. It was noted that McCormick was a high school dropout who had been living on the streets and at some points with his elderly mother. 
At the time of his death, he was 41 years old, unemployed, and on disability. It's also very important to note that Mr. McCormick could barely spell his own name, let alone create such a sophisticated cipher that to this day has never been cracked. Upon the discovery of his body, it was also strange that he was found nearly 11 miles away from his residence seeing as he did not own a car and the area where he was was at that time not served by public transportation. They also found that his body was already extremely decomposed despite the fact that he had only been dead for around 72 hours. There was no indication that anyone had a motive for killing him and no one had reported him missing. He was last seen alive five days earlier on June 25th, 1999, getting a checkup at what was at that time the St. Louis Forest Park Hospital. So none of the news stories in 1999 ever mentioned anything about these ciphered messages. And it wasn't until 12 years later that the FBI listed the death as a murder and posted this on the front page of the FBI website. Investigators believe that the notes in Mr. McCormick's pants pockets were written within the three days before his death. The two notes were written in an unknown code consisting of a quote, jumble of letters and numbers occasionally set off with parentheses. The FBI now believes that these ciphers could possibly lead them to those responsible for killing Mr. McCormick. Dan Olson, who is the chief of the FBI's Cryptanalysis and Racketeering Records Unit said, quote, Breaking the code would reveal the victim's whereabouts before his death and could lead to the solution of a homicide. Now there have been various attempts by both the FBI and the American Cryptogram Association, all of which who have failed to decipher the meaning of these letters, which are currently listed as one of the top unsolved cases with the FBI's Cryptanalysis and Racketeering Records Unit. His family has given their two cents on these ciphers, not even having heard of them until the news spoke about it nearly 12 years later and stated that he could barely write his own name, let alone what was found in these notes. And so, as uh, we look over the FBI page here, which I'll put the link to down in the video description, uh, the uh, FBI is uh, essentially asking the public for help because they cannot solve these ciphers, which have been reviewed uh, by the best of the best when it comes to experts at breaking codes. And so that's where the mystery ends. There has been no rectifying of this man's murder, no clues as to why he was found dead. 10 miles from where he lived, why these notes were in his pockets when he couldn't read or write. But the one clue that we do have, or at least that's been put forth on websites such as Reddit or 4chan, was the fact that, as I stated earlier, five days before he was found dead, he went to Forest Park Hospital, which at that time was run by a company called Tenet Healthcare. The word Tenet, by the way, is written in one of the notes in the man's pocket. And so this may be significant because at the time, there was a violent sexual predator priest by the name of Fred Linzicki who was working at the hospital. And it's believed that these cryptic notes that Ricky had on him related to some sort of bombshell information about this priest and crimes committed by people much higher up than him. But that's only one theory. It's also noted that in the cipher, the letters S-E-N have been used multiple times. And so many have said that this may be an abbreviation for the word Senator, which again could be nothing or may lead to something much larger than him. And in turn, the reason why he was found dead that morning in 1999. So I'll give you guys some links down below to some articles about this priest, uh, the FBI website where you can read more on this case, and maybe you guys can help me out with this. Uh, this story was extremely interesting to me because I know that we have a lot of smart people who watch this channel much smarter than me. And I was hoping that maybe one of you guys could look into this and try to crack the code. So if you want, check out the links below. And thank you guys for stopping by and uh, listening to the first installment of Insomnia Stories <laughs> right here on Secure Team. 
So thank you guys. If there's a mysterious case that you'd like me to talk about, don't hesitate to post it down in the comments or send me an email about it. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your night, and we'll see you back tomorrow with much more. Sweet dreams, guys.